I'm Ezra Raya, and this is the Manila Times. Although several would claim that the Philippines is having an educational crisis with the learning poverty at an all-time high, Pinoy grade schoolers have proven to be some of the best in the world when it comes to math. Filipino math wizards bagged over 100 medals and awards in the 11th World Mathematics Invitational, a tournament held in South Korea last July 14 to 18. Led by the Asia Math Sci League, students from the 1st to 12th grades from across the country competed in the event and bested students from other countries. Here with us is President of the Asia Math Sci League, Richilda Villame. Welcome to the Manila Times, Mom. Mom, Filipino students got 143 awards, including Star of the World awardee Mateo Inigo Esposa a sixth grader who got the highest score in the country. Aside from that, legend awardees Diamond, Gold, Silver, and Bronze Awards, among others. Mom, tell us about your experience in the World Mathematics Invitational. Um, it was quite tiring because it was uh, fast, but at the end, we were all happy because of the result. So initially, even the... Um, the, uh, how we secured the visa, it was quite difficult because it was quite a number that we are going to bring out and bring to Korea. But the experience uh, of the children, of these kids, um, that was very satisfying. Mom, tell us about the uh, World Mathematics Invitational. I understand this is not the first time that the Philippines has competed in this international mathematical competition. There had been previous winnings from years before, even before the pandemic, Mamano. So is this a regular thing that you do? And um, how is the Philippines faring in these competitions? Okay, and uh, we used to participate in the this, uh, we call this WMI. And uh, uh, we... Uh, the Philippines is always doing well, actually. Uh, like for this year, we have two legend awardees. The legend awardees means they were uh, they got gold for three consecutive years. So we have a number already of uh, gold awardees. And comparing with some other countries, uh, we have uh, we are performing. Uh, we we have a good record. So. Uh yes, WM for the WMI we first have the preliminary conducted in the country, that will be online, and then from there we select the finalists that will attend the uh, tournament abroad. Mom, I understand with uh, we sent one hundred thirty nine participants, students yes. from different schools, from across the Philippines to be in this competition. And in this competition, the WMI has over 1,500 um, students also from different countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Russia, Singapore, and Australia. And I understand they don't rank um, by country, you know, so they only rank the individual students, ma'am. So tell us about more about your experience, ma'am. How was it? Was it difficult for our students? Was it a piece of cake? Um, were they intimidated by uh, being faced by all of these other math wizards from other countries? Actually, the students, when they went out of the competition room, everybody was saying it was so difficult. The test was so difficult. So for a time, for a, a time, we were worried that our contestants may not do well because they found it difficult. So, of course, uh, especially for the first timers, they cannot compare um, math, a world, an international math contest to an ordinary test in the classroom. Although they are prepared for this, uh, maybe um, some were also surprised of how challenging the the contest was. But, but because they are prepared, they actually came prepared, then they did well. So Mom, if they found it difficult, the other countries find, found it difficult too. <laughs> Mom, I understand the Asia Math Sci League Incorporated is the one preparing our students for this international competition. So how do you prepare them for this level of tournament? 
Okay. For uh, WMI, yes, it is the Asian Mass High League that prepares our students. So first, we invite students all around the country, all schools, to join our training. So uh, this will be a training for 10 meetings, 10 Saturdays normally, three hours per meeting for a total of 30 hours. Now, after the 10 sessions, then we rank them. We choose the top 20% and invite them again to train for another 30 hours, 10 sessions. And then from the, uh, and that, that second part, second part of the training is more intensive, preparing them uh, really for uh, international contest like WMI. Mom, which uh, schools are these students from who compete internationally, right? And they've won awards for oh. the Philippines. So which, uh, from where, which schools? Okay, are... so I can name some schools. There are actually 16. So from Cebu, we have uh, Ateneo de Cebu. Uh, uh, from, we have also Ateneo in Manila, junior high school and uh, grade school. We have De La Sal uh, Lipa. Uh, we have Pasig Catholic College. We have Grace Christian College. We also have uh, Genesis Christian Academy. And we have public schools. Oh, I can't yeah. help but notice, ano, um, mm -hmm. I can't help but notice that the schools that you've mentioned, where our competitors came from, some of them are from exclusive schools, uh, privileged schools, and some of them yeah. are from public schools as well. Yeah. So yeah. talent really is everywhere for yeah. the um. May I ask, ma'am, how do you select the contestants? So how do you reach out to them? Or how does this go? How do you go about this? How do you select? How do you find these math wizards from all over the country? So we invite them through the uh, heads of the schools or through the superintendents. So in the, we, send that, we send letters to different divisions and to different private schools because normally... Uh, it is the school superintendent that give uh, um, this uh, information to the public schools and then for the private schools, the heads of the schools. So we send invitation for them to train, to try. And because this is also a measure of the standard of their uh, of mathematics in their respective schools. Mom, you know, uh, some would even claim that the Philippines ha is having an educational crisis and a learning poverty. But here you are excelling, not just here in the Philippines, but abroad. So what can you say about uh, the Philippines' current learning poverty, Mom? Um, this is quite a problem, actually. This is a very small percentage of students that are doing well. So if you will get the percentage of those students winning internationally with all the students of the country, that is very, very small. So what is the organization doing? We know that uh, the students depends upon their teachers in their respective schools. So what we do in the organization is we train math teachers. We train teachers and then we invite them to join us in training our uh, the good students so that when they go back to their school uh, to their, their respective schools they have improved their skill. I used to teach, teach teachers in the graduate school and I realized that there are those really teachers who are not that ready to teach mathematics in their respective schools because there are those schools who cannot, who do not have enough math majors, like a PE teacher, for example, will be teaching math or uh, these are some problems before. And then the problems compounded because of the pandemic. When the students stayed at home, then this, uh, when they came back after two years, there was a big lag actually so yes we are doing good but does it does not speak of the whole population of the country so what we are doing is we hope that we can expand by training more and more teachers mom like you said you agree that there is actually a learning poverty in the philippines and there is a gap between students who are uh, not 
learning enough and those students who are doing really, really well in international competition, competitions and tournaments even. And uh, also you mentioned that the, the pandemic has really left a dent on our educational sector and has left a lot of students behind. So aside from your organization training uh, more teachers to teach math uh, in their schools, respective schools, um, what else do you think can uh, we do in the education sector to bridge this gap to somehow solve the learning poverty mom? This is really a, a huge, huge problem. And this is really a, pro uh, a problem of the Department of Education, right? So as a private organization, what we can do only is to assist the Department of Education in the training of their teachers, uh, because we think that the teachers play a very, very important role in the education of the students. No matter how good your program is, no matter how good your curriculum is, if the teacher is not implementing it well, it, the, 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 teach, the students will not learn. For those uh, parents who would also like uh, for their children to do well in math, so what is your advice and uh, for those students who would love to be part of international competitions such as uh, where you've been? Mm -hmm. Okay, my advice is first, know your uh, children's interests because let us admit it, there are those parents who would want their children to be like this, but it is not their interest and therefore there will be, it will be a traumatic experience for them. So if they notice that their children have the interest and the skill, like if a child, they know, if their child, for example, is so very fond of solving puzzles, then that is a, a then that is a hint that the child will be interested in math and in problems. So for the parents, I suggest, um, you do not force your children to be uh, to do math if they are not interested. But if you see that their skills, then find a good training program for them so that they will be improved. Thank you so much, Asia Math Side League Incorporated President, Mam Richilda Villame. Thank you so much for your time, Mam. Thank you too.